Hey guys, welcome to another Six Stages Gaming set review. Tonight I'm joined by Richard Zapp and we're going to be going over the ice spoilers. Again, these are just going to be our opinions, so take these with a grain of salt as you will since, you know, obviously there's no delay, so we have actually had these cards yet just based on, you know, kind of our anticipations for the set. So without anyone freezing up with anticipation, we're going to get right into it. And Zapp, I know you've been working with this card a little bit, little bit already, so do you want to take off the kick off the comments for us or the first yeah, card definitely. Oh, well before i start i need to say matt thank you for uh let me come chill with you and review some of these cool cards absolutely um so so first we have emina emina the two cost backup that says your kazusa and kurasami uh spoiler i'm horrible with these pronunciations as bad as matt is so forgive us in advance uh, but this two backup reduces the cost of both of those cards by one. Um, while I think that's not outstandingly relevant with Kazusa, who makes the two drop and one drop, I mean, you're probably playing Kazusa, uh, well, if you're playing it early, it doesn't matter. If you have it in the late game, making that two cost of one cost could actually be surprisingly relevant. Um, but I do think having Emina to make uh, Kuwasami go from a 5-9 to a 4-9 um, increases the playability of the card a lot. Um, it's a pretty straightforward card. Uh, we'll have to see how good the cards that affect it are to determine how good Emina is on its own. Yep. Um, it's curious to see how the if the one extra reduction is going to make it see play. I'm not sold on it either way because I'm not sure if it, if this is going to go towards a... Is it a Type 0 deck? Is it a Mono Ice deck with some of the new toys that they got? But um, we're going to jump into the next card and kind of talk, remind ourselves as we're going through this. So then we have Kazusa, which also, again, you guys know I'm terrible, so I apologize on the name. Uh, enters a field, each player discards one card from his or her hand. So you're both discarding, which is interesting. Uh, and then you can place it into the break zone, Dalt, of course. Uh, and then again, with the discard. Um, the interesting thing I will note here, uh, again, with being type zero, so I'm sure there's some other um, synergies that might happen with across the different cards we got, but... I know that it was a little bit of a joke deck with the uh, the Leon card. The, it's a 3-drop 9k. When you play it, your opponent gets to play a character for free. Um, Ice got a bit more discard this set, so that might actually help increase its playability. The biggest downside to this card that, okay, you can make it a 1-drop, but that's completely irrelevant, um, is that, that the discard is symmetrical in the sense that each player is discarding one. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, but it can def definitely help the, you know, the Leon-based strategies that are out there, which, of course, I'm laughing, but it is, uh, it's a surprisingly real thing uh, that we had found out. And getting the extra discards effects that we have in Ice, I think this might actually go somewhere. What do you think, Zep? So I think the package that you start testing with this is you run three Kuwasami, two Emina, and one Kazusa. So Ice has this weird thing where you have a lot of good backups, but a lot of them you don't want to start with. Like, Devout is good, but it doesn't have any targets right off the bat. Um, Mog is a good opener, but its targets are limited. Uh, one of the benefits Emina has is it's, it's a decent card you play. Up. Kazusa, you really don't want to play it until you don't have a hand. So I think you run Emina in twos because you want to see Emina before you see Kazusa. And then you run one Kazusa that you hopefully draw in the late game when you don't have a hand otherwise. And it essentially becomes a two for one by itself. Because one the first one discards their card. And then they feel forced to overindulge on their hand to overextend. Or get threatened to get minus one from hand again. So I see the card being good. I think playing it in multiples is incorrect. Yeah, and it's also worth noting that it does, I just realized it doesn't say with all the other cards as they're plagued by, you can only use this turn during your, uh, or do use this effect during your turn, so you can use this on your opponent's turn before you would draw to help negate some of that losing cards out of your hand as well. So uh, mm -hmm. that certainly helps it out a little bit, but very good point about, you know, kind of not wanting to really see this until uh, a little bit later in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, past that, we're going to go on to uh, Kator Bashtar. Probably. <laughs> um, more That's type right. zero love. Uh, I, I gotta say, with an EX burst. Choose a forward of, co of cost three or less opponent controls and freeze it. Um, cool that it's a type zero. Uh, nice that it's an EX burst effect, even if it's, it's a bit limited, but 
Um, as a four drop vanilla, otherwise 8K, I am not terribly in love with this card. Uh, it can be a four drop 9K and, and mono ice, and maybe we get to this point where we're playing a more tempo focus because there's a, there is going to be a ton of three drops that are going to be played. Uh, don't get me wrong. Um, mm -hmm. But with the fact that it's not, uh, there's no S ability, you know, so it's, you're stuck between this parallel again, because yes, you want to have three because it's an EX burst, but at the same time, the uh, no S, so the extras are just come to discard outlets. I feel like this card's in a, a little bit of an awkward spot. So what do you, what do you think, Zap? <sighs> Largely agree with you. So four is a really oversaturated uh, drop, not only in ice, but in general with the game. Uh, while it's statted right, I think that its only niche is when you're playing a deck in which you're trying to hit 25, 30 EX bursts, where you want your opponent to believe that they're going to get hit by a burst more often than they aren't. Um, that's a niche deck, I think. Um, I think, you know, the one interesting thing about it being an EX burst is there is that one Opus 1, uh, 3, 8 Dark Knight that uh, you take a damage whenever it dies. Um, <laughs> And that's a card, kind of like how with the old Fasuya deck from yep. Opus 2, where you hurt yourself and then you hit Burst to get more advantage. You can do that with Ice, because it has a card inherently in it. Um, but no, I think you hit all the major points. All right. And yeah, I think another... Because um, isn't Laguna also a 4-drop and it's stall? And yes, it's situational, so you have to have Squall, and maybe people are moving away from that package, but I think I'd almost just do a little bit more work and have the discard Squall um, and Laguna. But again, that's exactly. all based on what kind of deck you're going for and where uh, that might be going. Um, up next, funny enough, we have the Laguna Mannequin, um, which is a copy of the, or a reference to the legendary version. Uh, choose a doll forward when it deals damage to your opponent. Hit it for 5,000. Um, I really don't have much to say about this card. It, it's, it's a mannequin, but it's not it's not um, Capricious Reaper. And 5,000 isn't really a lot to do with anything, so I just... I'm just giving this card a pass. Yeah. I, you know, I would entertain it if it didn't have Dahl Ford. Um, just because I think the Ice Earth Mannequin deck... Um, I really like the Mannequin's backup. It's a, the two-drop that you tap it, and the it Kefka pumps one? your Mannequin by 2,000. Yep. Uh, it's based off Kefka, I believe. Yep, um, yep. Having a second good Mannequin in Ice Earth to make that card playable in the deck, I would contemplate it. But this effect is just too situational. Yeah, I I chalk it up to uh, toilet paper. <laughs> Again, I, I am very happy to see the, the ice getting a little bit more love because typically they're underpowered. Ice and water have that. So at a minimum, seeing that it's a 4-8 uh, with a, with a you know okay effect is, is certainly nice. Ice has been getting a little bit of a, a little bit better as these sets have been coming out. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of more discard, and I know that there is an unholy amount of hype behind this card, Edward. Uh, and, and Zap, since you were kind of leading the charge with discard effects, I'm going to let you have this one as well. For sure. So so Edward is a three drop. You pay uh, two CPs. One of them have to be ice. Your opponent discards a card from his or her hand. Um, but you can only do it during your turn. Um, I think that effect is adequate. I think, I think it's one of those cards that people are going to think is great. And I'm putting it somewhere between good and hardly playable, personally. Um, paying two, two CP and then you tapping it, so essentially it's three CP for one discard. Um, if you consider you're paying three CP to get rid of two of their CP, um, it's not an incredibly advantageous card, especially when you consider that Edward isn't generating any direct advantage on its own. Additionally, it's, it's secondary effect, Escape. Um, you just discard another Edward, and it becomes immune from uh, backup destruction for the turn. I can't be chosen by opponent summons or abilities. I think that effect is also pretty situational, and if you're running Ice, you're probably running Devout, and they're probably more excited to hit your Devout than they are your Edward. So I think a lot of people are really excited about it. I think it helps with, with the discard variant. I think it's a staple in the deck running um, the 5-drop Ice Sid, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, definitely okay. Uh, are you going to give it more credit than I have? 
Uh, no, that's that's pretty on par. Again, escape for again the the main reason that you mentioned about if I'm playing against a nice player, there is absolutely zero percent chance I'm wasting a bike or hecaton care, uh, or however you pronounce it, on this card. When I know that devout, especially when they have things like Renoa that can come back in the in the tempo based decks that can hurt a lot if they get to keep replaying that. There's just more important things that you're using those cards for. And with the discard, I'm, again, not terribly in love with it. I'm, again, perhaps maybe a bit biased towards the idea that it's really going to shine in a deck that wants to capitalize on Leon, or it's a very discard-heavy strategy, and that is fine, but that's only, you know, a very small section of ice-based decks as a whole. So while I think this card has its, certainly has its home, it's going to be not, uh, you know, overly represented in the meta by any means. So I, you know, that does remind me of one important thing to bring up. So, across any card game, and Final Fantasy isn't much of an exception, discard decks like that focus strictly, like, discarding for the majority of their cards don't tend to do well, because most of those cards don't have secondary effects, and it often creates a lot of dead situations. So when you said how much you liked how Kazusa allows you to discard on your opponent's turn, that's excellent, because you know they're going to draw two, um, if they don't play their hand right away, you have the opportunity to snipe a card from your hand. Edward isn't a card that allows that. Yep. And, and that, that takes a point away from it as well. Past that, we have Kuja, which I just love this artwork. Um, I think He's it's pretty. absolutely great. This is going to make an amazing foil. Is, is um, Kuja a guy or a girl? Because I don't, I don't want to mess this one up like I did with the last <laughs> Well, you tell me. Take, take a guess. Take, oh. Let's... Uh... Let's see if you can play it. Your 50% chance getting it right. No, it's a guy. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a long hair, but it's, it's anime style long hair. Um, and those hips. Woo! No, no, it's uh, <laughs> definitely a dude. Um, let's, let's focus on the card effect. So, when it attacks, uh, you choose a forward. Um, you can doll one forward by paying one, and then you can freeze another one or the same one with one ice. Um Matt, you said that the ruling on it was that you can only use each effect once during each attack declaration, correct? Yes. Okay. So I think the card is, is pretty good. I think there's, you know, when we're thinking about three drops, its main competition um, consists of White Tiger Lassie, which is in the new set we haven't talked about yet, uh, Terra, the three drop Terra, and uh, three cost Sarah. Um, I think those are the only cards it has competition with. And out of those three, this one is probably the best statted. Um, it's unfortunate that it doesn't generate any direct advantage or protect itself. Unlike cards like Earth cards and Fire cards, as they protect themselves by being bigger than the curve. Three seven set yourself up for some vulnerabilities like uh, Ryholder and Fasoya. But I think both effects are useful. It's a card that you want to have in the mid-game. Having it um, early game and being forced to discard a card to resolve one of these effects are pretty meh. The ideal situation is you start the turn with Kuja on field, you have two backups, and you can resolve the, the freeze and the doll. And to me, that usually means having two or three backups already in play. I'm imagining having three backups, tapping one for the Kuja, next turn... Tap, use one of your three backups to play another card, and use the other two for a doll and a freeze. That says to me that it's it should be in the mid game. I'm I'm playing this as a two of. I'm gonna also agree with you that it's a two of uh, a, an important three drop you had missed, or maybe you just assumed that every deck that was playing it is again Renoa being a three drop seven k. Um, and, and again, I think I would rate it higher. So again, assuming every deck is playing Ice deck is playing Renoa, because I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, Kuja hits a very, um, I, we're getting to the nostalgic point on this really, for me at least, um, and I had brought this up in the last video, or last two videos now uh, ago, where in Opus 1 we saw, just a, for a very short while, a Lightning Ice tempo-based deck that heavily focused on the 4-drop uh, haste lightning when it comes into play, dull something, and we're, we keep getting these little pieces that push us back towards that deck. We have Amon, which again is just going to be great, it's going to continue to see play, and now we have Kuja, which can help dull something every turn. And it's also worth noting that um, depending on when you see this, your opponent might only have one or two blockers uh, in play. 
So you can dull their best blocker and force them to, you know, block with something that's either going to die to it, um, or, it, you know, you would never want to trade away this card per se, but maybe you, that's a position you want to at least offer up. Um, I think Kuja certainly has some playability to him, and I love the fact that that first uh, effect is colorless. I think that's huge. Um, Freeze, again, is, is certainly good, don't get me wrong, but I, I think that first effect being one colorless and being able to dull anything is going to be critical to this card's success. And I'm really hoping we get back to this world where we can play the four drop haste dull uh, lightning, the three drop now Kuja, and a four drop Amon. So yes, there's a lot of... Um, Tempo-y cards that can dull some blockers and get them out of the way, but um, again, the arc is just the, awesome, the too. Sorry, the one other relevant thing I wanted to bring up is I haven't thought too much about it, but I think there's some evidence that a Water Ice um, mid-range kind of control-y deck exists, and it's worth noting that Kuja is searchable by uh, the FF9 Mog, the same one that gets the, the Steiner engine. Oh, you mean Ico, um, BS. Yeah, oh yeah, Ico, you're correct, yeah. Um, that Kuja is a legal target for that, so that that may be worth exploring. Yeah, I can definitely, I can, I can get behind that. I would love to see a nice water deck pop up um, in one of these metas eventually. Uh, moving on, then we have Kurosame. So again, I'll just give you this one <laughs> um, since you talked about it earlier. Yeah. So, you know, my current opinion is it's in contention for best card of the, or best ice card in the set. Um, I love the card. Um, I love uh, Jill from Opus 1. I, I still think that's one of the best cards in the game, period. And this card being a 5-9, potentially a 4-9, if you're running that 3 Kurosami, 2 Emino, 1 Kazusa core that I was talking about earlier. It forces your opponent to, to attack you and, and to overextend a little bit, but it punishes them while progressing your game state. Additionally, it's synergetic with Jill, because Jill can freeze them the first turn, and Kuwasami can, can freeze them another turn after that. Kind of with the same concept, I was talking about how you don't want to overindulge in the discard. You also don't want to overindulge in freeze, because eventually you'll run out of freeze, and then they'll have six guys, and you won't have any. But it's definitely a card worth exploring. 5-9, uh, potentially 4-9 is fantastic stats, especially when almost ice, every ice deck runs Duke right now. And, you know, that's about it. The fact that it's a Type 0 means I can be tutored by uh, an Ice Lightning. And I kind of like that because Lightning is the car is the deck that's tapping the most other than Ice and allows the most opportunities for Kurosami to get two, two relevant freezes off. I think you brought up a good point, too, with Jill because it's also... Now that, uh, and again, so my other disclaimer is I have not looked at any of these spoilers. I just haven't had time other than like getting this ready. So I haven't had a lot of time to think about what kind of decks a lot of these cards are going to be in. And the rest of the set reviews are unfortunately going to be this way. Spoiler. Um, but I also like this idea is now in kind of an Ice Earth deck for the idea that you're going to have these freeze base effects, which your opponent, um, even if it's incorrect to do so, a lot of times they're going to easily overextend when they're frozen because they think, oh no, my opponent now has a big body on the field. I got to get some other things out there so I can at least attack on my next turn. You know, it, it plays this mind game with your opponent that very easily sets you up to Shantoto for insane value. So I think I might be revisiting Angel Wings um, or at least a, an Ice Earth kind of base deck. Um, and now that we have enough card, you know, more ice heavy hitters we might move away from that eight package a little bit but that uh i really like the freeze effect now that I, I think about this a little bit more and again just the fact that it's a five nine is a huge deal for ice um because you, ha you used to have to work so hard to get relevant attackers in those uh in that element that this is certainly a welcome addition so um i'm definitely gonna give this a better 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 uh opinion of it than when i first thought of the card i also want to chime in as well you're talking about how shantoto could be a great follow-up to this card. I think in the Water Ice deck that we were just talking about, um, you're running the 9 uh, engine, so you can run Zidane, and Zidane allows you to play the ultimate in this set that you'll be talking about <laughs> later. And that could also be mass removal. So that could be a strong core for the Water Ice deck. Yeah, I can get behind that. All right, well, I'm going to have to review this card a little bit more <laughs> once yeah. we're done with this okay. and put some brewing to it. Then we have uh, Shiva. Shiva. Ooh. Yep. Choose two forwards, opponent controls, dull them. So, again, in that kind of ice lightning tempo that I had just mentioned, ice tempo deck that I just mentioned, man, it's late. Um, this card is nuts. 
Like absolutely stone cold nuts. I'm not I'm not convinced that it might be, you know, um, just an auto and auto play, for example, in every ice stack, but in a deck that's playing um, or let's back this up. In Ice Lightning, I can absolutely see this uh, see this making plays because you have uh, Al Sig, which I, I'm sure is still gonna see a lot of play, that puts two uh, bodies on the board, and then you can very easily follow it up with, you know, Amon, remove blocker. You can use Shiva, remove two of those blockers, guarantee two points of damage. And I think that we're going to see a few different decks. And I know we have a few more effects in this set that have uh, free on-play effects. You know, like the Al Sids, the... Um, actually, Shelk is a huge one for this now that I, that I mentioned this. The Fire Ice deck is another probably really good place for this card. Um, there are a few cards we have gained in this set that play out forwards for free and i think we're going to keep seeing that so i could absolutely see shiva uh seeing some play in those types of decks that want to um put extra guys on the board and again with decidia i love the artwork so huge huge props to this card and it's going to look insane in foil as well the one question mark that you know i have about it is while the one cost no isn't as essential as it used to be this one cost no, and this Shiva doesn't have as much synergy synergy as the three cost EX burst Shiva. So if you're running snow, you may have to contemplate running the three the three costs over this just because I don't think the relationship between those two cards are are as strong. That's the one time that I'm he as hesitant to consider the Shiva uh, compared to the three drop. But in a lot of ways, I agree. I think the the potential impact it has is higher. So yeah, I definitely, I think we can both agree that this card is certainly going to see some play um, during the meta, and we'll see which one of those decks that it goes into. Or again, surprise, there might be a third ice base deck that pops up. Mm -hmm. Speaking of dull and freeze effects, and again, with tempo-based cards and ice finally getting uh, some love, and I will completely admit, before uh, Sap and I were talking, and I'm just going to own up to this, I literally thought this card only had the second effect, and I thought it was terrible. Um, and Zap made a very good point that the first effect is Shiva, so you're basically getting a one-drop 7k out of this, which, again, we're probably playing Duke if we're playing any ice-based deck, which it's a 4-8 to put it back up onto um, parity of what it should be, but this card's nuts. It's actually nuts when you think about it like that. So I, uh, yeah, I was wrong. This card is absolutely amazing. Um, damn. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, it's nice, too, because the, the two effects are pretty synergetic. So the first one's freezing your opponent's guy. It's still tapped at the end of their turn. You spend your turn using your, your CP to kill the four they just played. So then the board is just this tapped um, doll forward, and Genesis goes in and, and nets you a discard. Yep. Ice lightning. Ice lightning all day. I love this card. Um, you also need to consider the Ice Earth deck just because Genesis is a FF7 card, meaning you can tutor <gasps> it with Jesse. Yes! <laughs> so, so, you, so you get a really strong core there where you can search either Genesis or Vincent, depending on if you're winning or losing. Wow. All right, so uh, don't be an idiot like me. Go to fftcgmognet.com <laughs> where you can search all these cards by the category or game they're released from and see the relevant tutors. Um, don't mind Matt. He has some brain freezes from time to time. Yeah, it's also super late. God, that is... Woo! All right, I'm not... Yeah, well, uh, that card's great. Uh, <laughs> so, talking about a card that's not great, or at least I certainly don't think it is, we have Genesis Avatar. A 6-drop 9k who enters the field, deal damage equal to half of its power to all the forwards your opponent controls. Um, so, outside of the really obvious... Uh, so, again, I guess it's a 7, so kudos on that so outside of the really obvious maybe a wind ice control deck where you're playing um barbarisha or or there's i think there's two different effects that can reduce it um this card just seems like way too much work to to get it to actually um be a irre be irrelevant enough uh, for the effect is there anything else that i might have been missing uh card wise that this has synergy with Seth? Well, you have to consider that if you're if the six drop Genesis is on the field, the four drop Genesis cannot be on the field. Um, that's another reason why it's unplayable. Yeah. So the the problem is is there's not a lot of cards that are like play this backup, discard it for free, and do four thousand five thousand damage. 
that, that's kind of what you need is you need a card like the Cannoneer in this set, um, some some kind of backup that says do a four thousand or five thousand damage across your board. Otherwise, you're not generating enough damage for this card to be worthwhile. But I can think of much better board clears for a lot cheaper. Right, and now that you mentioned it, there is um, Magus, I believe it is from Opus One that deals three thousand all your opponent's forwards. I don't think that's going to be enough. Um, yeah, no, th that card uh, it's enter the battlefield. It's not. Oh yeah, that's right. So you'd have to play them both. Oh god, no, never mind, never mind. Um, that does not work. Uh, you'd have to pay nine in a turn, oh. and that seems terrible. The the one the one thing I can think of is having it on field and then devouting into four Terra. That's right. that that'll kill two top guys nine thousand or less. But why aren't you just running more Terras and right. doing four and then magic charging it? Yeah. All right. I think we both agree. You know, it's just bad. this name aside, this card is just taking too much work, at least for right now, to to may have a relevant effect. Yep. Uh, Kane, over to another backup. We have Shulk. Uh, when your opponent is dealt damage, activate her, and she can dull a forward. Uh, cost four, mind you. Um, interesting. I'm. The, it's a, definitely a an expensive effect and um <laughs> that we can get into this uh this trap again of trying to make a wind ice unblockable kind of themed deck and uh making that happen but i'm i'm not gonna even give that idea any credit past what i just did um i don't i'm just not not in love with this card um and i'm not exactly sure when that is going to come into play uh just again with how many good ice backups it has I, I i could maybe say this is like a one a two of maybe you just have it to have it um but that is a very expensive effect that well better be winning you the game at that point so the the card becomes really good when we start getting more three drops in the deck like i feel like most of the ice variant decks they kind of focus on four so the reason i say this is you could go three drop uh, create a board state where you can instantly go in for damage. Shulk untaps, and then you play another three drop. Um, looking at the first effect as not so much as an opportunity to dull two cards, but looking at it as an opportunity to generate additional crystal points for your turn. Um, I think you're underrating a little bit. I think this is going to be a card that's slept on, and I think it's going to be more relevant in the future, but the deck has to be more focused on three drops and five drops than it is on four drops. And you're, to that exact point, I just realized it's it's actually very good with Kuja uh, because you can dull something with the, the cost of this card. I, I, in theory, get up that point of damage and then just get to activate this for free. Um, right. Yeah. So I'm barely looking at the second effect to choose one forward and dull it. Um, yeah. Really, the, the only time I'm using that is absolute late game. To, to guarantee a win. Because um, essentially you're paying 5 CP to, to do a doll, and that's dolls are cheaper than that. But looking at it as a potential resource engine to gain additional crystal points each turn while progressing the game state, um, that's going to be... Abusing that is how you make that card playable. Okay, I can see that. I'm going to have to go back and see what other kind of effects that we might have for that. But yeah, Kuja... Comboing this with Kuja is certainly the first place that uh, comes to mind. Was there a card in Opus 2 that had a benefit if you had a Shulk on field? Uh, it was also a backup. A Shalua, I, I believe, is what the name was. Um, it, it gains oh, yeah. her a plus Shalua gave, power. gave Shulk a, a power boost, but giving her a backup a power boost doesn't help much. Right. Yep. Uh, then we have Sid. Uh, EX burst, 5 drop, 9k. So again, this is kind of where we start to see, um, and I think I hinted at this early on, that there are a few more. You just really want your opponent's hand to be empty, and this is a card that uh, Ice obviously is known for not having a lot of uh, break effects, and got a few in this set, actually. Um, and I think that if you're, again, very focused on that, um, that discard-heavy path, and then you can make this card also work, um, I think it could be a just a tremendous tempo swing um the the one downside is i'm not sure how relevant the ex burst is going to ever be because your opponent shouldn't be spending cards from his hand 
um, anyways, unless it's some benefit, like you, you usually always attack first and then play cards from your hand. Um, so a little bit of a, a downside to that. I'm not saying it's a non-zero percent chance that it happens. I said that it's just unlikely. Um, but I'm perfectly fine with playing this card, you know, on your own turn if you are on the very discard uh, heavy path. Took the words out of my mouth. Um, the EX burst part of it is a trap. I think there are going to be a lot of people that say, oh, I can run three Odins, three Sids, <laughs> three Mattias, and they'll never hurt me. And that's not realistic. If your opponent is playing well, they're not playing cards from their hand until until main phase two. Um, but yeah, breaking one forward when you when you play play him on your turn can occasionally be relevant. Um, cards good. Don't think it's great. A lot of people are going to think it's great. They're probably wrong. Yeah, I I can see this kind of taking the spot of Leon. Um, because I'd rather pay the two extra CP and break something. If if your bet is that I'm playing this card because my opponent's going to have no hand, I'm going to get value out of it, I'd just rather break something than they get, uh, you know, would otherwise potentially play some for free. So um, it's a slight upgrade, I guess, in that note. Um, we'll see how good that the discard effects um, are, or if they're potent enough, I should say, to make that work. Yeah. Um, now, a card that I am super excited about, because as I just mentioned, Ice doesn't get crap for break effects, and um, apparently we're just going to break all prime numbers. Um, so I know people are looking at this, and they say, you know, 11 drop and 13. We haven't seen those. Why Why does it say it on there? And one, just very quick, that's future-proofing. So there was um, Sin, which was a 11 drop. I believe it was in the chapters version. So they eventually got up to 11 and 13. Um, Knights of the Round Table is actually a 13 cost zone, if I'm not mistaken. It had a reduction effect, but that's irrelevant. Um, but break all the dull forwards of cost prime numbers. Um, now, the downside to this is that it does break yours. Uh, or I'm sorry, not that it does break yours, but it, it can't break uh, Renoa, because that's one of the things I always go back to in Ice, is I like to have a cards that have a situation to break my own Renoa just in case. But that note aside, um, this card seems absolutely bonkers. Uh, if you think about how many 3-drops are being played right now, how many 5-drops are being uh, hyped, and then 7, 11, 13, obviously not that relevant right now, but then even 2-drops is certainly uh, something to consider. And I realize that Golbez, I don't think, <laughs> I'm saying, I should say this, I'm really hopeful that Golbez doesn't make as much of an appearance uh, in Opus 3, but this does finally give Ice an out to, hey, they just they broke their gold as they swung all out, and then you can play this and kill all their two drops and get back in the game. So it's very interesting to see what is going to happen with this card uh, going forward. I think... So I'm making two predictions on two decks that I think are going to be good in Opus 3 based on what we saw in Opus 2 and, and the new thing, new tools they got. I think that Knights are going to be a good deck, and I think that Water Wind is going to be a good deck. This card seems really strong against both of those. Um, the Wind deck doesn't play a lot of fours. It plays a lot of threes. Plays uh, Zidane. Plays three pain. And it plays a lot of five. It plays uh, Agarius five. It plays Starner five. <laughs> Finer, Finer, yeah. And so that creates opportunities for advantage. Um, the Knight deck, uh, Delita, is going to be one of the most absurd cards in the set. Oh, yeah. And this being able to destroy that without igniting its uh, damage effect is useful. Um, in my first read-through, I actually didn't notice that this hurts your own cards. And I don't love the fact that it's, oh, you can hurt yourself with it. Also, if your opponent uh, act play something like Fairy to activate their card, it also dodges the destruction. So it depends on what you're playing. Um, Lightning has Exodus and Odin, which does something similar. Earth has, there's a four drop Earth Summon, I'm forgetting its name. Um, there's, yeah, there's Masked Woman, there's Mustadio, there's Robin, they all fulfill something similar. Uh, Fire has the new Ifrit, which is occasionally going to do the same thing. Um, there's enough cards that do something similar to this that it might not be great. I think it'll be a niche pick. I think it'll be really good in this meta. I'm not sold it'll be good forever. An important clarification, because I know someone's going to catch it, because we both did uh, misspeak at different times. Yes, it is only opponent controls uh, cards. Oh, oh, it is. Oh, yeah. okay. But that in yeah. mind, 
again, I think you're right in the assumption that, um, so again, I would split this up in two decks because you have your Renoa based decks and then you have your Ice Earth Control kind of base decks. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not going to go in the Renoa decks most likely, um, but it will go in those Ice Earth based decks. It might not be, you know, a three of, but it's certainly a powerful effect. And I like the idea of quote unquote potential board wipes that you can have with both this and uh, Shantoto and a couple more tools. So it's great that it's one sided. Obviously, instant speed, ice desperately needed more break effects but again with how uh, so we saw this card early and then we saw the two drop shiva eventually um, i think we're finally getting ice to be in a position where it, it's curving off into two very distinct paths and paths and i like very much where it's heading so i'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this card um probably played as like as as a two of to start uh, maybe it's mm -hmm. just a, a cute one of but um, I can definitely see board states where you're going to just be getting insane value off of it. Yeah, sometimes it'll be really good. Uh, Opus 3 will probably be a meta that is really good. Yep. So up next, we have uh, Zazat, I believe it was. I was trying to look up the pronunciation, and people couldn't agree. Um, 5 drop, 8k, so uh, already. Uh, first strike, though, which is huge. And then if you control any of those other uh, Dawn Warriors, uh, as they turn out to be, gets a plus 1,000 power and brave. So I was looking this up quite a bit, and um, I think it's Golof is the one that lets you, or no, it's Kelger, which is Lightning, which lets you play one of the other ones for free. So it, it puts us in this kind of um, X-Death, Mannequin, uh, Light, uh, Ace kind of play something for free mindset. Uh, and I do really like the fact that this gets can potentially um, get Brave uh, 1,000 power and brave to make it a 9k first strike brave, which is unheard of in ice. Um, I think it's certainly powerful, but I'm not convinced that it's worth trying to squeeze the slots out of all those cards to make sure that you're getting those relevant effects. I think it has the potential to be strong, um, but when I consider some of the ice, other ice cards, um, so again, just naturally, this is not at all going in the, in the discard focus death deck. It's very, again, more tailored towards a kind of ice earth control deck that I had just mentioned, but um outside of that I, I just really am not in love with this card i think it has to be very very focused on a certain strategy and i think that the ultimately five or six slots that you're spending on this just might not be enough because the cards are so dependent on one another i have nothing to chime in i give this card the cold shoulder Ah, <laughs> i guess i'm a man who just loves those uh those combos at the end and, and really hopes that you know somehow this card will prevail but i just i don't think it will um so speaking about cards so that won't card... prevail and make me really salty um sephiroth which um as people know is one of my favorite dissidia uh fighters to play as um and I, so i love the artwork i'll give it that um, and I have the, you know, one wing angel sleeves, what have you. Um, but you get to search for one dark card, Sephiroth, and add it to your hand, and it is an EX burst. So, really quick shout out to uh, Band's Final Fantasy Corner, or, or Pedro is the guy's name who runs it. Um, apparently, there was some really insane dark Sephiroth card that we're going to get, um, I guess, a year from now, I think, if the chapter. Um, cadence it matches up right that is just like and it, it was an insane must play dark card at the time so a year from now if we're doing another one of these uh you know set reviews and, that, and we finally get that card in that set hopefully i'll remember to to mention this card and, and why it's uh relevant again um but this card is doing nothing in the meantime absolutely nothing so if you want to spec on the card get your foils early and that's about all i can say so I think you're being a little bit savage here. Um, so when I'm building a deck, there are two things that I believe every deck needs to have. A, it needs to have a reliable way to field clear, which by field clear I mean I define as being able to kill two guys at 8,000 to 9,000 power with one card. I, I feel like the game is so tempo-oriented that that's essential. And B, I feel you need to have backup removal in a deck. I will never take a deck to an event that doesn't fulfill both of those requirements. What 4 cost Ice Sephiroth does is allows you to play 4 Sephiroth, or 3 Sephiroth, 3 Promo Sephiroth, and reliably allows you to use, I think, Hell's Gate was the effect. That I think it's discard a Sephi, pay 3, pop a backup. 
Um, now, I don't think that card is good, but I think <laughs> I think this card allows you to reliably play that card and allows Ice to reliably address backups in a way that it couldn't before. So am I playing the card? Probably not, but I, I think it addresses something really important, which is Ice can't do anything about backups. So we're going to play a bad card to get a worse card to hopefully answer some so, backups. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you do make a, a, a very solid case, though, uh, and I don't remember of any... Um, I mean, there's, there's always going to be some good backups. Like, we saw Heroic Lulu kind of dominate towards the end of the, of the Opus 2 meta, um, but I'm just not sure that we're going to see anything um, out of Opus 3 that demands that kind of card slots for, but... Um, again, so beyond if it's relevant or not in this exact meta, you do have a very valid point that it helps add consistency to the deck. Or even if you want to play the eight cost Sephiroth, you could run three of this and one of the and one of the dark Sephiroth, so you can either you know ex burst it or get it for the extra discard effect, what have you, and not have to worry about oh god, what if I don't draw that one dark card? So it kind of doesn't work <laughs> like that because the Sephiroth specifically has to get a dark one. You can't get another copy of itself. Right, but I'm saying it decreases your uh, the number of dark Sephiroths that you have the, of the specific eight costs that you have to run because you never want to see that card early. So you can uh, always you can always discard these Sephiroths if you want to, um, but you can't discard the eight cost. Okay. So yeah, after you're right though. After yeah. the after the second one you play this, it is literally just for the um, for the ice CP. Okay, so I guess by that theory, you'd run two of the EX burst, one of the eight drop. If you wanted to incorporate this into a deck, I guess which isn't terrible. That's only, I guess that is only eight, three slots. Um, I, you know, We're arguing I, if a card is bad or unplayable, man. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not going to try to think too much to make this card work. I just don't think that eight. If eight cost Sephiroth becomes the needed uh, war hero, then sure. Um, otherwise, pass. I, we're going to move on. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so the next three cards we can probably talk about in whole because it's it's the deep deep yep. ground soldier. At, so these, these numbers, that they count up, two, three, four. Um, the two drop lets you look for the three drop whenever you play it from your hand or another copy of itself. The three drop lets you search your deck for a four drop and put it in your hand. And the four drop gives the first two, in addition to any of your other ice standard units, 2,000 power. So the dream is they don't kill your guys for two turns and your board is 8-drop, 7-drop, 5-drop, and you essentially paid 2 for the deep ground, 1 for the deep ground, 2 for the DGS. So 2, 3, 4, 5 mana for that. That's the dream. Matt, is it a dream worth having? Well, uh, to be determined. I, I So two different things. So it reminds me of the kind of an ice... Um, very ice focused splash Kapal because it allows you to generate these cards and, and just swarm the field and then you can also pump them um, with Duke it's obviously great you get a um, significant improvement in power uh, but I'm not sure that there's enough ice job standard unit forward so again it, it, it doesn't just buff those two it'll buff uh, Mystic Knight which I think is the last card that we'll talk about which is also really good um, and I had joked with uh, Matt Rice a little bit because he loves standard units and we were talking that yes even though it is uh, specifically ice job standard units you could in theory run water um, warrior light and then some of the other you know water standard units if you wanted to just to have this just massive field of other bonuses that, that they would get now I think that's a bit too much living the dream I, I think you want to just focus on kind of the value engine that these uh, what would be nine cards in a deck provide um, but it's certainly interesting to see what direction this might go. And again, as someone who just loves tribal or a, a deck that's you know built around a theme, um, I want it to be or kinda... long leg. What's that? I said, or if you like long legs, get yes, figure up which we will show in a moment. Um, the one other thing I will say about this that I really like compared to the Warrior of Light based decks, um, in the same realm that we are playing Gapal, we also then can play Jesse, where we finally have a tutor for our uh what would be called the lord effect in, in magic the gathering so a card that boosts a uh set number of cards by some power so in this case 2000 power to all um ice standard units we now have a more reliable way to get that pump on top of being able to search it out so sometimes you might go uh 
two, four, if you, for whatever reason, if you use the three already, maybe you're out. Um, it's just one more way to guarantee that you're going to see this card. So you're always going to have this in the field uh, to pump your guys, which is something that the Warrior Light deck missed out on a little bit. I like that you bring up uh, Ice Earth here, not only because you have Jussie to tutor whatever part of the engine you want to start with, um, but you also have uh, Jussie, which can... Or yeah, you have Jussie, which search whichever part, but you also have Ignis, which Ignis can play the two drop for free. <gasps> oh, oh, girl, that is... um. And then you play Warrior of Light alongside Ignis, and you have a board that's hard to break. Okay, that's, uh, that's a spicy meatball. Yeah, you got me on that one. Um, so we'll click right through these real quick. Just uh, So 3-drop, 5k, um, the 3-drop that finds a 4-drop. And then lastly, to do with the rifle, 2-drop, uh, 3k. So again, this card really does, like, if you're looking at this, um, so ideally you get to play it for free because you're going to get at least 2 CP back out of it. Um, but it's only a 3k, so you need that You need that 4-drop. You need either a Gapal effect. It, it's going to need a little bit of work to make sure that this card can actually be relevant. Um, but I, I think that there could be some hope for this engine. Next, we're going to look at one of my favorite cards in the entire set, Time Mage. So Time Mage, uh, Matt, I think Flicker is the word you like to use for these effects. Um, is this I like to blinks? Yeah, I like to reference the uh, yeah, old yeah, yeah. card, uh, Strike Ninja. Um, basically what the card does is you, you it's a two-drop backup, which is amazing because Ice doesn't have a lot of backups you want to start with. Sure, it has like two drops like Jill, but Jill's not a card you want to drop turn one. Time Mage is a so card you can play turn one, get some CP out of, and then later use the effect, which is you, you tap Time Mage, you pay three other eyes CP, and you discard the yeah, and you discard the mage. You get to choose one of your forge you control, essentially take it off the board, play it again dolled, and not only can you use it to protect your forward from effects that destroy it. But it allows you to reuse any enter the battlefield effects. Yep. So again, this is really pushing towards the the in my opinion the discard strategy. So it's another way to get value out of five drop Sephiroth, for example. Um, it's a way that, and it would be expensive to pull this off, but it's still I guess worth mentioning. Um, the five drop said that we mentioned you could um, because it checks on resolution. You can play the five drop that's going to break something if uh, they have no cards in hand. Blink another card to make them dis so blink Sephiroth, make them discard those last two cards, and then Sid will check uh, after that resolves. It'll come into play, checks on resolution. Your opponent has no cards in hand because they just discard the last two that they're holding on to, and you break their forward. So that's probably the extreme case of uh, living the dream, if you will. But um, I'm sure there's some other relevant. Uh, enter the battlefield effects you can get out of this. Maybe you're blinking a Laguna to Dull and Freeze something. Uh, you you get the idea. It's just a very versatile card um, when we consider Ice just has so many of those enter the battlefield effects uh, or enter the field effects that I, I can see this card uh, being played. Um, and, and again, to your, to your exact point, the issue that Ice has is Jill. So uh, you know, not that this is going to be a three of because you're going to resolve the effect three times in a game, but we're finally in a position where we have these two drops that we just don't mind that we're seeing them early. So I, uh, yeah, I got to give it up to Time Mage here. So I, I think two cards that we just reviewed today that this card is excellent with is Genesis, being able to read doll and freeze a card, and then when you go for the direct attack and they try to beat it with a summon, you say nope, freezing something else. Um, similarly, uh, Kuasami, after freezing two forwards, oh, you God. bounce it and, and keep those two pinned down. Um, <laughs> I think other good targets include um, Six Lightning, protecting it from destruction, keeping a 9k on the field, and then getting another Odin to, to beat their next play is solid. I think 8 cost Sephiroth, being able to blow up two backups um, on the same turn if you wanted to. Um, while protecting the fir your, your first strike, um, that is a huge, huge momentum switch. Um, you could play, you could bounce um, Starner to research another nine card. Um, you bring up Laguna, which is a decent play. Uh, you can replay Pain to pay for a lot of the cost that it took you. No, I guess you probably won't have too many ice backups. Right. But so you get another. I think that's where we start to 
talk about the li limits of the card where it does have to be you're essentially betting on that you have four ice backups in play so it is going to be in a very dominate uh dominant ice dominant deck whoo we're getting towards the end here <laughs> um to to view to make this card good but again i think ice has enough and to your point exactly genesis done like that's i think that's just right where we need to be with it um in terms of getting another doll in a freeze maybe making our opponent discard something before that so yeah i'm uh i'm pretty excited good uh harley so cost reduced uh edward by two so you can make uh, so so again if we're playing the discard focus deck um and understanding that ice has terrible two drops this is really, really good for curving out turn one Harley, turn two Edward. Um, and that is literally it, folks. So if you're running that that package and you're playing a discard heavy deck, go for it. Be my guest. Uh, outside of that, uh, obviously it's a very hard pass for me. I agree. I don't like the card. Um, there's also a four... I thought there was a four drop Edward. Where there you, is, uh... but... Um, it's dull. I think it's also another dull the Ford effect. Um, so yeah, I, I guess it's not you know completely irrelevant because it makes it a two drop, which is also very very nice. Um, I'm just assuming that more often than not the discard Edward is going to be played. Um, right. Could be could be entirely wrong. Couldn't tell you. Um, I'm just guessing based on the number of discard effects that we've seen for this set and the number of cards that say, hey, I want your opponent to have no cards in their hand. Um, that's probably where they're going to focus. Um, you know, th I think Harley here teaches you a really good lesson about a card design that I think a lot of people overlook. So for this card to work well, you need to draw Harley before you draw Edward. Now, if you're playing two Harley and one Edward, you're probably not getting a lot of use out of this card to make it worthwhile. But if you're playing three Harley and two Edward to draw the Harley first, you're going to draw additional Harleys later, which is creates dead draws. When you're thinking about cards that directly say this card benefits that card, you always want to draw the, the first part of that combo first. But if that card doesn't do anything else, you're going to draw multiple dead copies, and you need to reevaluate if that card is playable. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that... Uh covers it pretty well um and finally the first white tiger which um again i couldn't Insane. believe it. i uh i can't believe that it's a rare um but i love this card just over over the top hyped for it um for two reasons again giving giving first strike again to ice which is certainly always welcomed but uh when i first looked at this as i was uh putting it together and as us going right back through this before we uh, were recording this I for some reason thought it only said when it is targeted by a summon. It's a, but it says when one or more fords you control are chosen by your opponent's summon, you get to have a free cancel. Um, that's absurd. When things like Odin are, I mean, Odin is yes, probably the most played summon in the game. Would not be surprised if it is with how popular Mono Lightning was and have you. Um, but beyond that, it also puts into question things like uh, Leviathan. We might see. It just negates Bahamut because you're never resolving that anymore. I think this puts a really interesting meta shift in perspective of what summons are people going to be playing, how much card you know, how much playability is this card really going to see, and how good is it at protecting your other fords? Again, the downside here, yes, it's a little underpowered for the power to cost ratio. That is certainly a, a, a sad, sad panda moment. It doesn't have an S, another kind of strike against it, but. I think that the effect is going to be strong enough where I don't know exactly what deck is going to want this, but I'm 100% sure that some deck uh, is going to find room for this. And the first thing that comes to mind is a wind, uh, wind ice deck with Aerith because it's just another way to protect your forwards and you're suddenly just narrowing down the ways that your opponent can interact with your board and creating a lot of dead cards in their deck. Uh, is that the best place for it? I don't know, but I, I would certainly probably start there. So if, if you're building around this card, if you think this card is good enough to be the center point of a deck, I think Ice Wind is the best place to start. Um, not Because you can use Duke plus Maria to pump it up to a 3-8 with first strike, Ooh. which is silly hard to break. 
Um, you know, the reason that this card is so powerful is one, because it has impact directly when you play it. If you're going for a game shot and your opponent specifically saved enough cards and mana, so or crystal points, so they can play their Odin, so they can play their Bahamut, this card just says that you're actually not allowed to resolve the effect. It's not that you have to wait a turn. Two, if they can afford to pay for the negation, there will be a lot of times that people have to discard two cards from their hand. They have to pay four CP to resolve the card. Often, when you end a turn and you want to play this five-cost summon or this three-cost summon, you have two cards in your hand, you have the summon, you have your one card, and you have your one mana, your one backup on the field, because you're trying to optimize your crystal points. Or maybe you have three cards in your hand. Well, this says you have to have four cards in hand and the one backup to pay six for your three spell or for your for your play. And it's not even that you have to pay six, it's you have to pay three and then you have to pay an additional three. Which is an important distinction because if you don't have the backups, that means you have to discard two cards and then discard two cards. Yeah, overpaying for this um, is certainly going to feel bad for a lot of players. Um, and you do make a really good point that I didn't quite consider. Um, it, it's one of the few times where if my opponent has one backup active, two cards in hand, I'll probably play this right b before I go to combat. Just, uh, I guess, depending on what deck they're playing. If they're playing Lightning and we think it's a Leviathan, we'll, we'll count the break zone, what have you. Um, but this that effect can just end the game on the spot because it doesn't create any kind of stack, chase, whatever it's called in this game again, uh, when enters play. So you just say, I'm resolving this good game and like shake your opponent's hand. There's, It's actually a very, very annoying effect um, that I think a lot of people are, are going to eventually get burned on. Um, you know, and, and maybe it was right that they made that play, but it, it's certainly going to create a few feel-bad moments. There is one more important distinction with this card that I think a lot of people are going to misunderstand when they start playing. This card has to be on the field whenever they play the summon. There are some people that are going to think, oh, I can just devout it into play when yep. you play your summon, or I can just tam it into play. It's important to note that is not a legal play. Yep, good call. I... I think that actually came in the Facebook came up in the Facebook group already, um, and no, it, it has to be on the field. So good catch on that one as well. Uh, now for the other white tiger, which I am personally hyped for. Um, again, with just because of focus on ice, and ice really lacks the heavy hitters that it needs. We have a three drop eight K with brave, potentially nine. Um, the downside is you can only pay with ice backup crystal points to play it so you, you can't play it for free this is confirmed by the game creator on twitter um i can't even think of the so you can't um what's his name Gis it in the play with the, the judge you can't use any of those effects you have to pay three ice crystal points from your backups to play this card um that said and, and now that i remember that we're actually getting a few more brave cards if we think back to uh joe's um now i'm gonna forget what he called the deck the save the queen the, the ultimacia brave deck uh, we're now kind of pushing ourselves in a direction where we have enough ice brave forwards where if someone is daring enough, they could probably make an Ultimacia ice, uh, so water ice brave based control deck um, with some bounce effects with some extra tap effects. And I think that might be interesting to pull off. Um, again, I might be a little bit biased because ice just badly, so badly needed some heavy on their own hitters. Because, uh, again, we, we've been relying on Squall and Laguna, uh, that duo, for quite a bit of time. Yes, when we saw the Ice Lightning decks, there were some other cards, but Ice has just not had just a solid beater by itself. So that is why I am probably overhyped for this card. I, I know Zap is going to give you a little bit of a hard time on it, um, but I really love what this card represents for Ice. If you're playing multiple copies of this card, you're absolutely doing it wrong. I strongly feel that way. So not only do you have to have three ice backups in play to play it from your hand, most of the ice backups that you're playing are killing themselves. Even in this set alone, Time Mage is blowing up itself. Um, Kazusa is blowing up itself. Devout is blowing up itself. It's hard to keep three ice backups 
at the same time. And you need to be you need to have be so late in the game that you have those three ice backups hard to be playable. Um, the one caveat to that is if you charge it for crystal points in the early game, you can devout it into play. Um, but the late game, they probably have their 9Ks, their 10Ks, if they have boost backups. And that probably means they're going to crash or override with Nimbus. The um, idea is you're at six points, they're at six points. You devout White Tiger into play, and it allows you to attack next turn without while being able to defend yourself. But I'd rather do Genesis, uh, freeze and all their guy. Their guy still can't attack. I can, go, I can go in with it next turn. I think it's accomplishing almost the same thing. So I think this card is a zero to one. I think a lot of people will tell you otherwise, but card is questionable at best. Yep. Personally, I'd, I'd put it as a two of, um, but yeah, I think it's going to create a very, I, I, exactly to your point, I think you have to switch how you're normally building your backups for ice to get the most out of the card. Uh, then we have Cannoneer. Uh, five drops, so very expensive for ice. Um, and again, it can be hard to get to that with a deck that, again, is breaking a lot of its backups. Enters a field, choose up to two forwards, opponent controls, dull and freeze them. I love this card. Um, it's badass. I I mean, the, the, the fact that it's common, so um, if you're some crazy madman who tries to run three of these and, and wants to live that dream, um, why not? But I, I, I think this is going to be a one to two up for me personally because... Again, we're getting to this point where we just have so many dull and freeze effects that I just can't pass up this card. Uh, but but oftentimes we are going to struggle to play it a little bit because you're you're going to discard a card to play it. You're not going to have um, you know multiple backups in play past three. Uh, it's lucky to have four, so you would have to pay three, discard a card, play this. Maybe you're using the last one to pay, play a three drop or something. Um, it is going to be very resource heavy on you um, with being a five drop, but I think that. Again, because it's a dull and freeze effect, it can absolutely be just a, a, a superpower at Shiva, if you will, um, and may be able to win you a couple games on the spot in that mid to late game holds where uh, your opponent is trying to leave up the, the right combination of attacking and defense, and this card can just absolutely punish those plays. You want to try a fun deck? Um, build Ice Wind. Um, get to the mid game. Play Cannoneer on them, freeze two of their guys. On the next turn, play the Opus 1 4 cost Riku. Bounce your Cannoneer, bounce your Jill. Oh, dear. Play the Jill, freeze them for another turn. Um, they play two more guys. Um, <sighs> tap Jill and discard the two cards you drew off. Play the Cannoneer again and freeze the two the two new plays. Rude. And, and, and Riku says any number <laughs> of backups, right? I'm pretty sure is the wording on it. So you right. can choose. Yes. Oh, God. Um, wow. All right. Yeah, that's uh, that's a mean thing. Uh, and then what I believe is the last card is Mystic Knight. So a two-drop standard unit for 5k. If Mystic Knight received damage from summons or abilities, reduce, reduce that damage by 5,000 instead. So I want to like that effect. Um, automatically, it's going to protect it from Heroic Lulu, which... Yay! Uh, chances are you're playing Duke, so it's really a two-drop 6k. And then again, if we're also throwing this into that um, Deep Ground Soldier or DGS package, uh, it can very quickly become a two-drop 8k that's very difficult to remove from ping-based effects. Uh, so on that note, how much play does the Fire Ping decks uh, get? We'll see. Um, but I like this card for the standard unit deck. Uh, outside again of that, uh, I'm not terribly sold on it, but it does provide a nice standard unit for ice when we had uh, just had seen this other you know nine cards you're putting in the deck that really want to capitalize on standard units. Yeah, I think it being a standard unit is definitely the the selling point. Um, there's a lot of ways to pump it up to to seven or eight. Um, there's ways to play it for free. Um, things like arc and Ignis. Um, I guess you're playing the Wind version. Um, so you have, I think Ark is the one that, is Ark, the, Ark pumps? Yeah, Ark is buff some. Yeah. So Ark and Maria. So Ark plus Maria plus Mystic Knight, or plus Duke is 8-2 that you need to do 13,000 damage to. Um, it's okay. And then you, well, yeah, I don't know what you do after that, but it's okay. 
Yeah, because I mean it's only twelve uh, forwards in the deck if you put that whole package together. Um, yeah. Which maybe maybe there's something there, who knows? Any other uh, last thoughts on that? Um, I don't. Know. It's a neat, it's a neat card though. All right, and then of course we kind of have our last picks at the end. Um, right before recording this, I threw these together. Uh, Zap is my witness on that because I changed what the legend was once I actually read the damn card. Um, so legend is Genesis. That makes uh, complete sense. I don't think anyone's going to debate that one. Uh, White Tiger Nimbus. Um, I will again. Zap and I are very much split on this. We've kind of talked about that enough. Um, it, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing where that goes. Um, and then Rare and Common. White, the other White Tiger and Cannoneer. So Zap, what were kind of your honor, honorable mentions for the Legend Hero Rare and Common? Um, you know, outside of the Hero, since we've already uh, touched on that uh, recently. How do you um, feel about so the rest of them? So Genesis definitely gets the O for me. Um, I think Zalera is probably better than White Tiger. Um, for the rares, definitely White Tiger, Lissy, Quin Me, and you said Cannoneer. Um, I think Time Mage is cuter. I'm not sold that it's better. Um, Time Mage and Cannoneer are equally respectable answers. Uh, Kazusa's. is. I said I think I think Kazusa is a fantastic one of. I'm really excited to see people get three, two discards from that card. But uh, yeah, Ice definitely got some buffs. I think Ice got the most buffs, and I definitely think it's a viable color to build around for the next format. Yeah, I'm. Uh, again, I I think one of the first places I'm going to start at least is going to go back to my uh, Ice Lightning Tempo roots with the new Shiva, um, new Kuja. Hopefully it's going to get some love in there too. There's just so many ways to remove your opponent's uh, blockers from the game. Um, of course, the danger there is that you have to play this the, the racing game very carefully because um, usually doing some combat math at one point in the game is going to lose you the game because that's the tempo, how tempo-driven Final Fantasy is. But um, I like to live dangerously, so we'll see. But we had certainly ran long on that one, so thank you again, Zap, for joining me. I uh, hope you guys like this set review. Again, these are just our opinions. Take them with a grain of salt. We're not going to be right every single time. Um, we had joked about, uh, Jamie and I joked about that we might do the uh, the review of the review towards the end of the set and see where our predictions kind of ended up. Um, but we'll see. So if you like this video, guys, make sure to drop us a like. Subscribe to our channel for future Final Fantasy TCG content. Uh, might be doing some other games in the future, but of course, we're going to be always dedicated to FFTCG. Um, and of course, let us know in the comment section below what your favorite ice-based card was. If you want to give us one for each rarity, that's fine. Maybe tell us just your top ice pick. Let us know. Get that discussion going. So on behalf of Zap and I, thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next Six Sages Gaming. Have a good this video made possible by the patron support of viewers such as yourself. Thank you to our honorary sages.